That's your problem. We've been given the formula. You th we have been given the formula to keep him out of our lives. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Lord, the Lord. He didn't bring Daniel out of the lion's den to be able to say nanny nanny boo boo to the people that threw him in there. He didn't shut the, lion, the mouth's lions to keep them poor cats hungry. He took care of the lions and he took care of the enemy because he needed Daniel. He needed Daniel to come out of the lion's den. But it really wasn't he needed Daniel out of the lion's den. He needed Daniel on his knees morning, noon, and night. He's got a witness. He's got somebody that's praying three times a day. He opens up and he's faithful. He's so faithful that he will stand in the face of losing his own life to pray. Well, it ain't about proving nothing right. I got this picture and I don't want to be disrespectful to the Lord. You've got to understand this. I don't want to be disrespectful to the Lord at all. But I think you can picture this. We've got in our minds that our life sometimes is like a bone that two dogs have got a hold of both ends of it. Have you ever seen that before? Pulling as if it's the devil on one side and the Lord on another. You get rid of that picture. Get rid of that picture. The devil ain't no competition for the Lord. He's not the opposite of the Lord. He is not the main enemy of the Lord. The devil has been defeated because what did the Lord tell the 70? Do you remember? Rejoice not that the devils are subject unto you. Why? Yeah, but he said something in between that. He said, for I beheld Satan as lightning fall out of heaven. Now I watched a message this week that I was reminded. Does anybody know how fast light moves? 186,000 miles per second. That's how fast the Lord flipped the devil out of heaven. No, you're not grasping this. But I want to keep on fighting that and I want to keep on struggling and I want to keep on being able to get down and pray and grovel and say, Lord, the devil is about to kill me. When the devil ain't your problem. He can't keep you in the pit. He can't keep you down. He can't keep you discouraged. He can't do it. Would somebody hear me? He can't do it. The only way you can stay down is if you want to. Your foes are inconsequential. You're not being pulled between heaven and hell. You're being pulled between heaven and you. The Lord didn't keep those Hebrew boys through the fire because he needed to prove something to Nebuchadnezzar. He kept them boys through the fire because they stood for him. And they refused to worship any... Oh, I could preach right now. They refused to worship anything but him because the Bible said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. They refused and the Lord brought them through it. He brought it to keep them. The Lord is going to pick you up out of your mess not to prove a point, not to validate you or vindicate you. He's going to pick you up out of your mess because he's got a work for you to do. He's got a plan for your life. He's got a mission for you. He's got souls that you're going to connect with and bring in the truth. He's got people you're going to be able to testify to and bring them out of the pit. The Lord is not working in your life so he can prove something to the devil. Y'all don't like that too much, some of you. We like to keep our imagery. We like to keep our imagery of stepping on the devil's head. The Lord ain't thinking that way. It's done. Do you want the victory? Let the Lord pull you up. I've been reading too much and I've been hearing too much and I've been, I've been seeing too many testimonies and, and I told you about people being healed. We, I told you about, the, I think maybe I told you, I'm not for sure, but about a little mentally retarded boy being healed.
We serve a God that can do anything. He can do anything. He can do anything. <coughs> Look at here, verse 2. You know, I guess you already see the 10 minute things out the window. Oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. I hope you understand this ain't talking about your cold. This ain't talking about your belly ache. The Lord's abundantly able to heal that. That healing has already been paid for. It's according to your faith. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. But he's talking about healing. And, I, and I'm preaching in the Holy Ghost this morning. Maybe a good thing that Brother Lovell is preaching tonight. And thou hast healed me. One of the healings that needs to take place. Boy, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them manifest in this place today. Just let me tell you something. I've been back to praying through the tabernacle three days. That's it. Everybody say three days. Already everything's been changed. Three things have been changed. Three days, everything's been changed. Oh, I want to, I want to, I really, really want to start just walking amongst us. And I want to start laying my hand on first one and then another and tell you what's wrong in your life. But the bottom line is, is you need to be healed. Not of your infirmity. You know, that, that, that's not what's holding you back. Because remember, I've talked about it so many times. Look what happened to Paul. The Lord told him your infirmity ain't getting no better. Paul said, okay. I just realized that when I'm weak, I'm strong. But I'm talking about having your perception healed. I'm talking about having your mind healed. I'm talking about being delivered from a victim mentality and, and being delivered from a, of, of the pit is normal mentality. I cried unto the Lord. And he's healed me. Some of you have been, some of you in this place right now, one in particular, you're on my mind right now. You're still battling bitterness as an adult that gave root to you when you were barely 10 or 11 years old. You're still battling it. You don't know why you have difficulty praising the Lord? It ain't because of me. It ain't because of that one sitting next to you. It's because you're still in the pit. You're still in the dungeon. You're still in the bottom of the well. Just let the Lord lift you. I'm talking about a God that nothing can change. You can still have the same sorry job. Okay? You can still drive the same old raggedy car. You can still live in a house that you can see holes through the ground. You might live in a house when squirrels pee on you from the ceiling. Been there and done that. But you know what? But you know what? Don't want none of that. Stop the Lord from pulling you up out of the pit. Didn't I tell the truth right then, baby? That same room, Sister Maria, that squirrels stuck their nose through and looked at me while I was sleeping with no air condition, working the midnight shift. I had some of the most profound prayer meetings of my entire life, Brother David. Well, I got to get this fixed and I got to get that fixed. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just reach up to, as the song says, that reaching down hand. Let the Lord pick you up. 
get rid of, of your mentality. Well, I need the Lord. If the Lord will do this, and if the Lord will do that, and if the Lord will do this, let Him lift you. And then act like you've been lifted. And in doing so, you lift Him up. Let the Lord heal your circumstances or heal your, heal your spirit even though He doesn't heal your circumstances. O oh Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Verse number 3. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Verse number 4. I'm about to get to verse number 5. Probably going to end it today there. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness, of His purity, of His sinlessness, of His mercy, and of His grace. Verse number 5. For His anger endureth but for a moment. Now, what does the scripture tell us? I want to make sure you understand me now. I, I mean, this is important to me. I prayed this morning, God, let me, let me slow down. I want to make sure they understand. The guy said, you lifted me up. I will praise you because you lifted me up. And you made it so my enemies could not rejoice over me. I cried unto you and you healed me. Then sing unto the Lord when you remember his holiness. And then it says, for his anger endureth but a moment. That tells us a lot. What does that tell us? What does that tell us? The Lord was mad. What was the, what's the deal? I want you to pull this out. The Holy Ghost can work in here this morning. Don't think he can't. I know this is kind of straight. I was in a down place. Kind of like a dungeon. Kind of like a pit. And the Lord lifted me. I've made a decision to praise him because he lifted me out. He brought me out. He lifted me up. And I, it says, I cried unto the Lord, and he healed me. I was in a mess. I was all jacked up. I was in a low place. I need to be lifted up. He brought my soul back from the grave. Now you understand he's not talking about a natural grave, right? But he brought me back from the place where I thought it was all over. Where I was nearly dead. You remember the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Verse number 4, singing to the Lord, O ye saints of his and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness for his anger endureth but a moment. What does that scripture tell us right there? Does anybody think they got an idea and you're scared to say? What does verse number 5 tell us? God was angry. And I'm being reminded that his anger endures but for a moment. What's that tell us? Somebody tell me this. Where's the old boy praising the Lord for bringing him from? From the pit. From a low place. A dungeon. Not a pleasant place, but a bad place. And in his mind, he has been resurrected. And it happened because he cried unto the Lord and he healed him. And then he says, I'm going to encourage you singing to the Lord at the remembrance of his holiness for his anger endureth but a moment 
Has anybody caught yet what happened here? He is thanking the Lord from bringing him out of a mess that he got himself into. And there was a moment, there was a moment, I could go on down to verse number 6 and verse number 7 and really explain this to you. So verse number 6 he said, in my prosperity I said, I won't ever be moved. So what does it mean that, that God was angry for a moment? I messed up. I did wrong. It wasn't because God let me down. It wasn't because God failed me. It wasn't because God was no good. It was because I violated His law and I violated His trust. And because I found myself in a mess and God was angry. Why would God be angry? <laughs> I want you to think about this just for a minute. And I'm, I'm going to close. Pray for me that I can get better at painting word pictures so you can understand. Why was God angry? Time out. Stop. What has God done for this fella? Lifted him up. Why was God angry? <laughs> Let me tell you why God was angry. Because you've been spending your time trying to survive in the pit. And quite honestly, I want you to hear me and don't misunderstand this. But you're wasting precious time. God has a plan for you. God has a mission for you. God has a duty for you. And brother David, it ain't got nothing to do with the pit. You know why he's angry? It's because he's having to pick you up out of a place you never should have been in the first place. The Lord has got a plan for you. He knows the end from the beginning. He's the Alpha, the Omega, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. But the Bible says his anger endureth but for a moment. Which is the opposite of what? Come on, how many people have pictured this? Do you not see how many picture this? You look at God like he's you. And I promise I'm going to do better. I'm going to work hard and do better. What's the opposite? Y'all think about this, gals. What's the opposite of his anger endureth but a moment? He ain't holding no grudge against you. He's not holding a grudge in you. He ain't got time to keep punishing you and keep messing with you. You think he wanted the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years? No. They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years to get rid of all the unbelievers. They had to get wander in the wilderness for 40 years so they would prove to him that they appreciated the promised land. That wasn't the will of God. The plan of God was for them to go straight in. You've been wallowing around in your quagmire of self-pity and despair and rebellion and bitterness. And the Lord has been angry for a moment. But he ain't got time to hold no grudge against you. He's not that petty. He's not that shallow. And he's not that sorry. He recognizes, my goodness, they shouldn't have been down there. But they cried out, uh, and I'm going to heal them, and I'm going to draw them up. Uh, I'm going to pick them up because i got work to do. Uh, i got a plan for them. Uh, we got souls to save. God's got too much for you to do for you to stay wallowing around where you are. Why do you think you're here today? You're here because somewhere down in the re deep recesses of your pit, the Lord has managed to get through and get a hold of your heart uh, and brought you into a place uh, where you can hear the truth. Uh, and the truth is uh, you don't have to stay in your mess not one more day. I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. And he healed me. In his favor is life. That's what he's all about, his life. That's why death perplexes us so much is because we don't understand it. Because it's so final. Because we can't see him anymore. In his favor is life. He's pulling you out of the pit so you can live. 
I said, he's going to pull you out of the pit so you can live. And his favor is life. You ain't been living. I tried. God is my witness. I tried. I tried today. I was in here praying. Boy, I almost messed up. It's going to sound like I'm bragging on myself, but I'm really not. I, I promise you, I'm really not. It's, it's really, I don't, I don't know whether to feel ashamed or embarrassed or whatever. I, I don't know. It's kind of crazy, Brother David. Because I knew what I was going to preach this morning. I knew what I was going to preach from. I got here about 20 after 7. I handed out the books. I, uh, I did a couple other little things. Oh, I read my, did my Bible reading. I did my Bible reading. And at 7.40, at 7.40, I came in to pray. My phone rang. I went and sat down at my desk and answered it. And uh, I saw all the lights come on in the sanctuary. Opened my iPad and looked, and it was 8.55. Brother Pete, my plan got all messed up because I was going to pray about 20 minutes. And then from 8 to 9.30, I was going to study. But Sister Leanne, I didn't even know it. It was 8.55. And I even cracked my Bible for this morning. The flesh says, you dummy. Now here, you think about this quandary. <laughs> How many ever said, I didn't get to do it because I prayed too long? Huh? Try that one for an excuse. I'm late to work today because I pray too much. I don't think that's happening too often. But I got some people I'm preaching to this morning. I'm telling you, when you begin to pursue the Lord with honesty and strong intention, I'm talking about Sister Leanne, pull up to a four-way stop. It happened to me. It happened to me yesterday, Friday, Friday, it happened to me. And a man who never, he never looked at me, Brother Pete, he never saw me, but I know him. He don't even live in New Madrid, but he was here, I think, to pick his wife up from work. And he passed over in front of me. And I just saw a glimpse of his face, Brother Terry. And the Holy Ghost said, you need to pray for him. Hey, well, what, what's that got to do? That, my friends, is living. That's living. When you see his face and say, oh, sire puss looking behind. Smile a little bit. Life ain't that bad. I'm glad I ain't like him. That ain't living. That ain't living. That's to be carnally minded. And the Bible says carnally minded is death. Say, so, well, now you're going to brag on yourself. No, my goodness gracious. If you ever think I'm bragging myself, you meet me out back. And I'll show you how carnal I can be. Brother Pete, I ain't, I ain't made it to heaven yet. This, 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 is, this is somebody who can come and sit and pray and, and, and be sitting there. It didn't happen this morning, but I can be sitting there for 20 minutes. My mind be in a whole other world. I ain't perfect. I ain't arrived. I ain't got it. But I'm learning. I'm getting there. And the Lord's revealing to me through his word, Brother David. I didn't bring you up out of the pit so you could say nanny, nanny, nanny to your enemies. I ain't worried about your enemies. I'm worried about you because I got a world to save. And I'm going to stop crying over spilt milk. And I'm going to draw you up. And when I draw you up and I lift you up, you lift me up. And watch what we do together. And watch what we do together. In his favor is life. Weeping. Here we go. I knew you, want, you wanted me to get on your part. Let me tell you something. Some of you folks are going through so much hell, you got me depressed. I ain't joking. I'm not joking. Some of you are going through so much. 
I know you are. I'm not belittling what you're going through. I'm not. That's why I, that I have to get emails and I have to read things and I have to search. God, I need some answers. I need some answers. I got to be able to preach. And, and in my mind, Lord, if I say the right thing behind the pulpit, they're going to say, that's it. And then everything's going to be fine. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. But here, his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night. Here's where we are. But you don't understand. I want to be sad. I want to be down. I want to be in the muddy grubs. Then do it. Then do it. Am I doing all right this morning? Then do it. Let me tell you what breaks my heart worse than anything. Breaks my heart. I like to pray during, during altar call. But more than anything, I like to watch. Because sometimes I've been reaching and I've been reaching through the Holy Ghost. I've been reaching and I've been reaching and I've been reaching. And you know something, Sister Maria, when I close my eyes, my faith says, boy, they're going to be there. Then I open my eyes and once again, Brother Pete, I'm disappointed. And the question I have to ask, Brother Terry, is why? Why do you want to stay where you are? Why do you want to keep wrestling where you are? Why do you want to keep going on the same up and down merry-go-round when message after message, word after word has spoken to you and pulled at your heart? But I want to do this and I want to do that. Rain on what you want. The trumpet is fixing the sound and you're going to be left behind. It's that serious. It's that serious. And I'm telling you to come out of your pit. Let me tell you something. You ain't coming out when the rapture takes place. Don't you think, well, I'm just going to grovel around here till the trumpet sounds and he's going to get me out of here. No, the Lord's got too much for you to do for you to stay there. <laughs> Weeping may endure. You may go through a struggle. There may be a trial. There may be times that I walk this floor and I weep and I cry. There may be some of you sitting here today that I knelt at your seat and prayed for you. <laughs> That I knelt down at your seat and rebuked the devourer for you. You think it's all fun and games and it's all joy? No, it's a burden and it's a struggle. And Brother David, weeping may endure for the night. But joy. Stand with me. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy, but joy cometh in the morning. I'll ask you one more question. Then I'm closing. I'm shutting it up. No notes. I'm kind of excited to know that I can say I'm closing as many times as I want. And Garrison ain't here to keep track no more. <laughs> nah, I wish he was. I told his mama last night, I said, text him, tell him he come home if he wants to. I don't really mean that, but I kind of do. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The opportunity is yours. You say, well, I'm going to stay in my mess. Well, just stay. Stay. It stinks. It's nasty. But as I'm reading all this, and the psalmist, Brother Terry, is talking about what God did for him. He's talking about God did this and God did this and God did this. Let me get up here on the platform where everybody can see me. I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. Pay attention. I've talked about some things that will inspire you today. That well, I live a pretty good life. Brother Billy, you and I have talked about that before, about people that, that are good. They do good and they behave good and they follow the rules and, and they don't lie and they don't cheat and they don't steal. They're good people. And when next time we talk, I've, I've been dealing, talking to the Lord about that. And, Imagine what those people could do with the power of the Holy Ghost. I know I'm supposed to be on there, but I got nervous. I had to walk around. Or something. And I thought, Lord, I'm going to preach to these people this morning. And I'm 